Look, I don't wanna scare anybody with this video, but if you're constantly feeling tired or foggy or just not yourself anymore, it might not even just be your age or your job. A new study out from Nature shows that it might literally be microplastics that are being absorbed from the environment and being embedded in our body and our brain tissue. I'm Dr. Cody Roll, a U.S. Navy trained and board certified psychiatrist that specializes in neurotechnology wearables for assessing brain health and wellness. A new study out from Nature Medicine took a look at samples from autopsy subjects and found that there are microplastics all throughout their bodies. And the scary part is that there can be up to 30 times more microplastics lodged in our brain tissue than in other tissues throughout the body. And the really scary part is that tissue samples taken from autopsies of people that had dementia found that those who had dementia in life had 10 times more microplastics lodged in their brain tissue, otherwise healthy subjects that did not have dementia. So a few months ago, I saw that article and I started going down the rabbit hole and I did not like what I saw. These aren't just tiny particles that get lodged in your tissue and sort of just sit there doing whatever. They actually can be hormone warping chemicals that can mimic things like estrogen, inhibit the effects of testosterone, and as an effect, kill motivation in both men and women and can even have an effect on your cognition. These microplastics are tiny fragments of plastic that range from small shards to tiny particles that you can't see. They're shed from things like food packaging, plastic bottles, and even clothes. They're so small that if you ingest them, they can pass through your gut lining, enter your bloodstream, and even go through the brain blood barrier and lodge themselves in your brain and other tissues throughout your body. It's likely that most of your exposure is ingesting the plastic with your food or water, but it might also be coming in through the air or getting absorbed through your skin. I can hear you right now. My gosh, this stuff is everywhere. I just give up. Should we just wrap ourselves in tinfoil and move to the mountains? What are we to do? And I get that it feels overwhelming at first, but the good news is that there's a lot of steps that are actually pretty practical that can limit your exposure to these microplastics. So let's take at a couple of things that you can do right now that are quick wins that will limit your exposure to this stuff. I've taken most of these steps, but there's still some ones that I need to implement. You know, my wife and I want to be healthy, but we also have young children that we don't want being exposed to these chemicals, if at all possible. One of our first steps was not microwaving food in plastic containers like plastic bowls or plastic Tupperware. What happens is the heat activates those plastic molecules within the containers and then they leach into your food to be consumed by you. Another example would be drinking from a warm plastic water bottle that's been sitting in the car. All that plastic from the container is leak. Another example is if you are still cooking with Teflon pans, those can release toxic fumes and microplastics into the food, especially when those surfaces are scratched or overheated. And I'm sorry to say it, but that bag of microwave popcorn that you love so much, that bag is coated in plastic lining that literally melts into the popcorn that you're gonna be consuming. So here's some really quick wins for this. Make sure that you are cooking with the cast iron or stainless steel cookware, pots and pans. Make sure that you're storing your food in glass or metal containers and be using a stainless steel water bottle instead of plastic water bottles, especially if you leave it in your car or if it gets heated up during the day. One personal loss for me is the Keurig. I love using the Keurig to make my coffee in the morning, but these plastic Keurig pods, as you can imagine, they get heated up and leach all the chemicals from the plastic into your coffee. And uh, man, I'm just gonna have to give up Keurig. I have to get to figure out some other way of making coffee without plastic exposure. I've got a couple of ideas and I'll give you an update soon. So those are the quick wins to limit your microplastic exposure. But if you want to do something like my wife and I are in the process of doing, kick things up to the next level and install a reverse osmosis or double filtration system for drinking water. I thought that the filtration unit in our fridge was good enough, but apparently some of those canisters that you put in the fridge to filter your drinking water don't have enough filtration for the really small particles. Another thing that you can do for cooking is switch to Himalayan salt instead of using the regular salt that often comes from the 
ocean that unfortunately is really contaminated with microplastics. You can switch to bamboo toothbrushes and biodegradable coffee filters. And don't get me started on receipts that you get from Costco or Sam's Club. Apparently these receipts are filled with these chemicals that you often find in these microplastics, something called BPA that can be a pretty powerful endocrine disruptor in the form of mimicking estrogen. And if you want to go full on savage, you can do what Dr. Peter Atia did, which is get a full on HEPA grade air filtration system for your home. He actually had to upgrade his air conditioner because the filtration was so small, it needed more power to push the air through. My um, residential HVAC units are not powerful enough to push air through a MERV 18 or MERV 19 filter. Um, so what we are going to have to do to make that work is not replace our HVAC, but add units to each of the air conditioning units that basically boosts its power so that we can indeed move to MERV 18 and 19. That's something that my wife and I have not done yet, but if you really wanted to take things to the next level, you could. So ideally, those are all reducing your exposure to these microplastics that have the BPA and the phthalates that are endocrine disrupting chemicals. It's really important because as you get exposed to these things long term, it could cause some sort of hormonal imbalance, especially in men that can lead to lower libido, mood problems, issues with motivation and energy, troubles with focus. There's even some evidence that long-term exposure could blunt your dopaminergic circuits, which are linked to attention, drive, and reward sensitivity, which is really going to affect your motivation. You really need those brain circuits optimized so that you get pleasure from exerting effort to accomplish your goals. And probably the worst thing that you could do is blunt those effects through use of drugs, different chemicals, but apparently microplastics are doing this to people too. Now, when it comes to actually causing dementia, I want to be clear, the Nature Medicine article did find 10 times more microplastics in the brains of people with dementia, but we don't know causation quite yet. Is it people with brains that have dementia are less able to clear out microplastics or were the people with dementia exposed to more microplastics? It's hard to parse those out. I don't know yet, but I'm not taking any risks. I gave you those quick tips to cut them out. But on top of those swaps, I'm still doing my biohacking techniques. I'm using stroboscopic light stimulation to activate my brain's immune system to make sure it's clearing out any toxic byproducts. I'm also doing photobiomodulation training to keep my brain's mitochondria strong, improve the blood flow, and activate my brain's glymphatic system, which is further clearing out any waste products. And one of the most important things that I found is good sleep turns on your brain's lymphatic system and clears out all these microplastics and other toxins. So make sure that you have a good sleep schedule because getting that deep restorative sleep is one of the best things that you could do to keep flushing out these toxins as you go throughout your daily life. As a result, I make sure I go to bed and wake up around the same time every day because it really helps encourage deep sleep. And I want to make sure that I'm detoxing every night from this stuff. So while we can't eliminate every microplastic, microplastic in the environment, we can take some serious steps to help protect ourselves. Soon I'm going to do Brian Johnson's new microplastic blood test, and I'll track my progress as my wife and I implement more of these upgrades this year. So if you want to see the results of that testing, click the subscribe button and follow along because I'll have future episodes on that. We talked about sleep and some other methods that I'm using. I'm also taking a number of different supplements and I'll link that below. You can take a look at what I'm using. It's a free PDF and might educate yourself on what supplements I think are good for brain health. I also did a video on my supplements and I'll put that video right here. So click that and I'll see you on the other side.